Hallelujah, Jesus. The more we realize that, the more we embrace that love, the less fear we deal with in our lives. Praise God. Fear not. I think someone did a word study on that and found that it was 365 times fear not is spoken in the word of God. That's one for every day. Praise the Lord. Amen. Fear not. God is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Love is with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this evening. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Suzanne and Sarah. Great job. Appreciate it very much. And thank you, Michael, for taking care of my memory lapses. Praise the Lord. Both of them. Hallelujah. First, I forgot the mic, and then I forgot to turn it on, so we're good, am I? Praise the Lord. God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Appreciate y'all being here tonight, and as we said, Sunday, we're just changing things around some, and we'll be doing different things, in, or at least different in different order, and just trying to, to stir things up a little bit, and, and as we get into doing this more and more... It's actually just as awkward for us because we don't know what we're doing either until we get started. So well, that's, that's probably a good thing. But um, as we get more uh, this sense of freedom that I feel like, you know, we're, we're going to experience more of, the more we'll be able to plug things in and do different things and allow the Holy Spirit to really have an opportunity to minister. Now, I mean, I... Let's face it, God ministers in every aspect of the service because he's in us. If we come to, to worship him, to, to pray to him, to, to deliver his word, uh, you know, to testify to one another and so forth, there's the anointing's there because Jesus is the anointed, amen, and, and that anointed one lives in each, in each of us. So that, that's a reality. But I, I do believe that there are times when the Holy Spirit would like to move in broader ways and, and sometimes in more specific ways that uh, if we're not too regimented, uh, it gives God an opportunity to do some things that, uh, that he might not otherwise do because, after all, he, he's depending on us as his vehicle, praise the Lord, to operate through. So that's the intention, hallelujah. And, and it also it's just a way for us to say, Lord, we're open to what you want to do, and we're trying to make ourselves available for that, and that's, that's important, praise God. So, again, God bless you all for being here. And I'd like to uh, take any prayer requests that uh, anyone might have right now. Michael. Absolutely. You know, sometimes I know uh, in my life and so many people that I've known over the years, it's these crisis times that God is able to move. You know, when we, when we really do come to the end of ourselves, uh, we start looking for something beyond us. And, uh, it's, you know, I think that's one reason why there are suicides and other things, because people just give up. They, they're at the end of their rope and they don't know where to turn. But if we can... If we can present Jesus to him somehow, anyway, however we can get him into the mix, he can transform that life. And uh, that guy could come out beautiful, perfect, whole in Jesus. Amen. And that's what we're going to pray for tonight, that God will be able to move into that situation and be revealed. Sarah. That's right. Amen. That's a good word. Anybody else? Sally. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Suzanne.
Yes, Jane. Absolutely. That's right. Amen. Amen. And when you're a grandparent or a parent, that's the closest thing to understanding the love of God. As much as I know you love the granddaughter and are concerned, God that much more. God cares. And so because of that, it gives us confidence because we know what we would do. We just fix it. Amen. And uh, that's what God wants to do, the same thing. So praise the Lord. We're going to believe God's doing a work in that family. And we can see that. And so the enemy immediately comes in and tries to stir up more problems and create more anxiety and fear and stress. But he that's in us is greater than he that's in the world, and that's what we're standing on. God will make us victorious over every attack and lie of the enemy. Praise God. So we're going to pray for that young woman. Amen. Amen. Mike. Amen. You know, it's just, uh, the devil is so predictable. And we were talking about, I think Sarah and I said, we're talking about this, I know Sally and I have multiple times, how that is just, it's like one thing, and then it's on everybody. If it's allergies, if it's, uh, you know, sinus stuff, it's like half the church has it. And then half the people you know that are connected through you are dealing with the same thing, back issues. Uh, Sally's battled this. I know Carol's dealing with some issues right now. Cindy. See, it's just the devil. I mean, that's what he does. He, it's a distraction. It's to get you to focus on this instead of on that, you know, instead of on what's inside of us. I'm not saying they're not real. I'm not, I'm not just poo-pooing the reality of the pain and whatever. I'm just saying that's the way the devil works. He just tries to get you off into this fear and anxiety and stress and all of that because all the time you're dealing with that, you're not expecting God to do anything miraculous or supernatural. But that is what God wants us to focus on, and that's what we're going to focus on tonight, that God is greater than any attack of the enemy. No weapon formed against us can prosper. Amen? Every tongue that rises in judgment against us. We know that the enemy is the one that wants to judge us. He, he's the one who comes to, uh, you know, to criticize or to, to ca character assassination, you know? He, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. And that isn't just to make you, you know, accuse you of being a bad person. It's to accuse you you're sick. Amen? You've got a, this problem. You've got that problem. That's what he's doing. But he that's in us is greater than that. But God also tells us in that scripture that no weapon formed against us can prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against us, we condemn. Amen? So God has given us authority over the enemy. And we resist him, and we're going to condemn the lives of the enemy in every one of these situations tonight. 
Amen? You all with me? Every, every situation and every circumstance that has been mentioned here tonight, God knew about it before we ever got here. God put it on your heart to request it because he said, I know what you need, but I want you to ask me. Because I want you to know that it's going to be me that moves in this situation that brings about the answer. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. 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 We're going to believe that because I think people are realizing this more and more. Amen. That you are being a blessing. And God has blessed you to be a blessing. And that that's what, you know, completes the circle. He's not going to back off and we're going to just continue to confess his blessing upon you, upon Eric and whatever he's doing. He's going to feel the presence of the Lord, and God is going to be there. We know that he is there with him, but he'll be there in a way that's manifested, in a way that is obvious to, to Eric as well, because that's where rest and peace comes. Amen? Yes, Mike. Uh, this afternoon at Black, or this morning, I'm building my post on uh, Facebook and stuff. And at the same time, I was reading her post and stuff, you know, some things that are for me, people like that, and stuff like that. And, and I'm working with the uh, uh, junior high and high school that's downstairs, and it's been influx of food or fries or whatever, mm-hmm. situation like that. So, you know, I can have it, I can have it. So I'm reading reading old Jody's post, and it's nothing to do with Jody Lewis, except the Lord put on my heart to pray for his Greek, her son, and his girlfriend, Hannah, to help them minister to the youth. Not only to help them get indoctrinated and ready, but also to have someone closer to their age and stuff like that. So just Yeah, pray. that'd be great. Pray with Praise the Lord. Let's pray about it. Amen. Okay. Anything else? All right. I'm not going to ask you to stand. I was listening to somebody. I don't know what, when it was or where it was. But they were talking about uh, praying from a position of rest. Now, we stand in respect to God, and, and that's there's nothing wrong with that, believe me. But God knows our hearts, too. So I'd like you to just pray from the seated position. We're seated with him in heavenly places we're at rest in christ so we're not stressing about these issues we're casting our care upon the lord and resting in the promises of god amen healing deliverance breakthrough consciousness of god's presence awareness of god's presence and god moving in people's lives supernaturally so that they can know and experience his love and know that they are valued, that they have great worth, so much so that God gave his life for them. Amen? So let's just go to the Lord right now. Now, Father, we are just so thankful that we could come to you with every need, with every situation, with every circumstance, and not just to come and cry out in pain and fear, but to cry out in victory. Lord, that once we have given our requests to you, we know that the answer is finished it is done healing deliverance peace breakthrough salvation in every area of life lord that has been your promise to us lord throughout eternity and we stand on that word right now in jesus name hallelujah that all things work together for good to them that love god to them that are called according to his purpose And, Father, we believe that with all of our hearts tonight. We believe that you're moving in these lives, even though it may look like a bad thing. There's good coming. There is a blessing and a breakthrough and a reality of God that's going to show up in their lives and change them forever for their benefit and for your glory. And so we release our faith for that right now. Our faith in you, Lord, in your grace, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you for the testimonies that will come as a result of what you're doing in their lives right now, Lord. Be glorified and be magnified in every one of these situations. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, praise God. Uh, Ron, would you do me a, uh, a good thing here and come up and take up the offering for us? And I'd ask you, if you would, just to pray. Amen, amen, and God richly bless you as you give. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. I thought she was coming for the blanket. Praise the Lord. If she does, I'm going to get it. have to share. Praise the Lord. I'll take one, Rod. That's right. And when you open it up, uh, hello, Father. You know, uh, you know, you should get. But uh, uh, he said, uh, you know, to uh, get a quiet place and and then see a vision of Jesus and, and to meditate and and uh, uh, give an answer. And and so. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, it was, I mean, he was so special and, and so good that uh, uh, just we can do it continually, be in his presence and, and receive and, uh, oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Amen to that. Praise God. That's right. Thank you, Lord. I think most of us have, have learned over the years, I know I have, that when things start closing in on you, this right here is the best thing in the world. It's the best medicine there is. Peace just comes. Nothing's changed in the natural. But for some reason, all of a sudden, the, the burdens just seem to kind of get lighter and lighter and lighter. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So the more we are in this, the greater our faith is for what God can do and what God wants to do. Our expectations grow. Without expectation, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, the scripture says, faith is the substance of things expected, is the way I like to say it. I know it's the things hoped for, but faith is really our believing that God is going to do what he said he would do. So we, we, we grasp the answer before it's a tangible thing that you can grasp, but you grasp it with your heart, with your, with your spirit, amen, as though it were a physical reality already. And we know that everything in this natural world starts in the spirit realm. Amen. Nothing happens here that hasn't happened there first, praise God. And uh, so, praise the Lord, that's, that's the way it works. Hallelujah. This is, this is uh, spirit. He said the words that I speak are spirit and they're life. Hallelujah. They're not just uh, a one-dimension or two-dimensional uh, thing on a page. 
but they are spirit and life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And health to them that get them. Praise the Lord. That take it. Praise God. All right. Amen. It's uh, Wednesday night, and I want to be respectful of your time. I know you all got stuff you have to do tomorrow. And so let's go to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. And I, I'd like to read uh, verses 4 through 10, Mike. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 through 10. And then we'll jump ahead a little bit for after that. But Praise the Lord. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Now, if you drop down to verse 16, and we'll read verses 16 through 20. We have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Praise the Lord. Now, let's go to Habakkuk chapter 3, and I want to read verses 17 through 19. Habakkuk chapter 3. Verses 17 through 19. I think one of, the, one of the biggest difficulties with this idea of love is that when we think of love, generally we're thinking of, you know, well, I don't know. <laughs> I know how I think of it, but I, I, I'm afraid we live in a world where love is really, the word is used in so many weird ways that have nothing to do with what love really is, but, you know, I love my car, I love my dog, I love this, I love that, I love the pizza, I like, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so we kind of get confused, and then when we, so then when we try to make it more real, then it becomes a love that is, you know, intimate and feely, you know what I'm saying? But this love that we're talking about here, if you can feel it, that's great. But whether you feel it or not is not the issue. You choose to love. David said, I will love the Lord. Now, he was going through some stuff that he probably had some questions about what's going on and why and everything else, but he made a decision. And, and I really believe that that's the direction God's taking us. He does want to do some powerful things and some, some miraculous things in this church and this body. But one of the things I think, and one of the first things that we're going to have to settle the issue of love, and that is, we can disagree. I think, Sarah, we talked just briefly after church last Sunday, and I've had these conversations with others before as well, but families, <laughs> praise the Lord, you all come family, right? <laughs> Were they perfect? I mean, they're, they're dysfunctional. Fam that's just the nature of families because they're filled with human beings. And the thing is, you know, somebody can say something to me, or I might say something to Sally, or Sally might say something to me. Not only might she, she has, praise the Lord. But yet, she is as defensive as they come if anybody says anything about me. 
it's okay for her because she's my wife, right? But if anybody else says something, she's more thin-skinned about it than I am, to be quite honest with you. She'll jump the shark, praise the Lord, because she just she's, she feels like she needs to defend me. That's a good thing, right? And that's the way we are about our spouses and about our kids. We may say some stuff to them. We may get yourself into that room and don't come out, you know, until you're 21. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> or in, in my case, it would have been more like 35. But anyway, you know, but don't let nobody else going to talk that way to my child or my spouse, right, or my brother or sister. I might. We might have some differences. So that's what I'm saying. We can have differences, but we still love one another. We still respect one another. We still, because we're human, right? But that's the thing that has to be settled in us. Even though we may have disagreements, it doesn't change how we, how our, our love for one another, our commitment to one another as a body, as, as the children of God. And I think God is really trying to emphasize that. And because you'll find that the more the, the spirit moves, the more stuff gets agitated. It's just the reality. It's just the truth. Because God's moving, and so he starts the enemy planting this little thing and that little thing and the other thing. That's a good indication. On the one hand, we go, oh, man, I'm frustrated because I said this or I did that. I do this, you know what I mean? I, so, but I'm just saying, on the other hand, if you see it for what it really is, it's also an indication that God is moving that God is doing something. We may not see the big picture yet because it's happening in the spirit. It's filtering into the natural realm. But the enemy sees it, and he's freaking out, and so he's doing everything he can to try to make separations, create divisions. Amen? A house divided can't stand. Amen? doesn't mean we can't have disagreements because we will. We'd be ir irresponsible and... and uh, irrational to think that there wouldn't be we're all different people God created us with our personality and he wants us to have that personality he gave it to us right so there's going to be those things and that's okay that's all cool as long as we know it's just like that's my brother amen that's my sister this isn't long term this ain't going on forever I mean and even when I'm in disagreement I'm still in love I'm still committed I'm still I, my, I'm into this thing for their benefit as well. Praise the Lord. That was free. But here we go. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vine. Though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Praise God. Verse 19. The Lord, God, is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills to the chief musician with stringed instruments. Now, I think of this when I, when I see this. I, I, I'm just making the analogy here that uh, God's doing something in this church, in this body. Now, it may look like there's no fruit on the vine yet. There's no, hey, but I, I just say, I, I'm, I'm a... Uh, kind of a glass is half full person. So I'm saying, but we do have a vine. Yep. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there's potential, right? There's a possibility that fruit will be on it. There may not be anything in the field, but thank God we got a field. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God is saying, if you know, I've given you the the basics for what I'm going to do. He's going to do it. He he is the vine. Amen. We're just going to bear the fruit. We're going to be the, the benefits, the beneficial side of this thing. And the other part of that is, do you ever notice that fruit isn't really self-sustaining? In other words, fruit doesn't get any benefit from fruit. Right. What it gets is the ability to produce more fruit. Right. You know what I'm saying? From the seed, then it goes on and something else is more produced. So it isn't about, geez, I can't wait till I prophesy this thing, or I can't wait until I have this vision, because it's not about you anyway. Amen. God wants you to be evidence of his reality so that you can produce greater reality for other people. Does that make sense to you? Amen. So it's not just about how shiny my fruit is, you know, my apple, my pear, whatever this thing is. But it's a, the fact that now this thing can be productive. It can be, it can be uh, 
multiplied, amen, because of it. That's, that's number one. Now, the good thing is, I don't know how apples feel about this, but I know for us as, as, as humans, the Spirit of God cannot flow through us without blessing us. It's the idea of being blessed that you can be a blessing. So anytime you're anointed to do something for somebody, and you're anointed for that all the time, by the way, and when you do it, you get the benefit of that flow of the Spirit. You are benefiting at the same time that others are benefiting. You understand what I'm saying? You can, you're not, you give and it's given unto you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not just talking about dollars here. I'm saying about however we do this, this is, this is how the, the, the whole kingdom of God operates. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So the objects of our wants is ultimately a psychological experience of happiness without regard to what makes us happy. Confused? So was I when I thought it. But do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of times we're, we're more interested in the feeling than we are in what that really represents. So we never, get to the, we never get to the realization of what it is God's trying to do. Amen. So we, we're wanting the, the, the experience of happiness without any real regard to what it is that actually makes us happy. Now does that make more sense? I said the same thing. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I want to feel happy. But do I really know what makes me happy? That's what God's trying to get us to. Not happiness for happiness sake, but what is it that really makes me happy? In other words, the final object of our wanting is something other than what's going to satisfy because what's going to satisfy us is what really is the desire. But we settle for a happy feeling instead of getting to the ultimate desire. That's why we have drug addicts. That's why we have alcoholics. That's why we have multiple, you know, broken relationships. That's why we have all this stuff is because we're thinking we're settling for a feeling when there is an ultimate goal that God is trying to get us to that will satisfy us. And I might just say... The simple answer is it's him. It's God. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Well, what comes from that light is spiritual. It's glory. It's satisfying. It's love. And that is the real hunger in everybody. That is the motive for everybody. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about the touchy-feely. I'm not talking about sexual... I'm talking about what love really is. It's a person. It's God himself. It's more than a feeling. I'm going to write that down because that could be a good song. It's more than a feeling. It's, it's God. It's a reality. It's an existence. It's a truth that the human heart hungers and longs for because it's put into every man. Even the unsaved have that hunger. That's why they're running around trying to fill that with everything other than God. And their lives are destroyed as a result of it, just like the man that, that Michael was talking about, like most of our lives at some point, until we come to the fulfillment and the satisfaction that we long for and hungered for. Now, most of us, are not, we're not really there yet. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that to, to I'm talking about me. I'm, I'm saying we're... God is, that's what God does. He's drawing us into a deeper and deeper and deeper relationship with him so we know love more. We understand love. It's a greater thing. God becomes greater. God becomes more real. Our confidence in God becomes greater. Therefore, God can do more. Amen? God gets glorified the most in me when I'm most satisfied with him. Praise the Lord. 
God is glorified in us by the way that we experience him. Not just by the way we think about him, but the way that we actually experience him. Praise God. James chapter 2, verse 19. And how do I experience him? You know, one of the things is the way I relate to others. Amen? Jesus said, uh, I, 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 you're, you're, you're blessed because when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was in prison, you came to visit. When I was naked, you clothed me. And they said, what, 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 when, when did that happen? He said, whenever you did it, to the least of these. That's loving God. And God is most glorified when I'm most satisfied with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Think about this. You believe that there's one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. <laughs> now, you may not agree with this, but that's okay. You have a right to be wrong. <laughs> but the devil thinks more true thoughts about God in a day than most of us do in a year. I mean, he was in the presence of God for millennia. We don't know how long, but for who knows, outside of time, right? So he has more true thoughts about God in a day than, than most of us in years. And yet, God's not honored by it. Praise the Lord. John chapter 8, verses 42 through 45. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you'd love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie... He speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. The devil may know more truth about God than we do, but it doesn't honor God. And why? Because there's no love in the devil. I don't know that he even has the capacity to love. I just know that he doesn't love. There is no love in him. And you can look around the world and it's self-evident. You don't have to have a, uh, a Bible class to know that. Amen? See, the problem with the devil isn't his theology. It's his desires. It's his wants. That's the problem. James chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts. I don't think that's the scripture I want here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law. Let's back up to uh, verse uh, 5. 
If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed. Praise the Lord. So when the devil, when we, when we doubt God, when we question God, it's a lack of love. Now, because of grace, God doesn't punish us because of that, but the problem is we can't get what it is God wants us to have. Amen? So what happens is we then substitute things for that. So even though we may have, you know, good theology, we can be operating like the devil with wrong desires and wrong wants. And I'm not talking about sin. I'm just talking about substitutes for the true relationship with God for what God really wants for us and from us. Amen? All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So our focus is to glorify God. You were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we're, that, that should be our focus, to glorify God. And we do that, the best way we can do that is to trust him. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Good. You know, you can have romantic relationships and so forth, but, but there isn't a lot of trust involved. You know what I mean? Again, it's just about a feeling. But true love, real love, deep love, a trust is developed. And that trust actually becomes more important than all of the other aspects of the relationship. Because it signifies real love, true love. Not just a momentary feeling or emotion or desire, but a connection, something that is greater than just romance. Not that romance isn't good, but romance isn't the end all and the be all of this thing. It lead, it should lead us to a place of trust. Amen? Amen? To where you know, I got their back, they got mine. We got the same purpose, the same goal. We're, we have the same end in mind. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So the to- I guess you know what I'm saying, that no matter what we do in the spirit, and that means laying hands on the sick, casting out demons, uh, you know, raising the dead, uh, speaking prophetic words, uh, delivering people and, and bringing people to Christ, all of those things are important. But really, no matter what we do in the spirit, the ultimate goal is God. And only God. Amen? Amen. We want God. When we're praying for the sick, what are we? Pr- are we just praying because I've got faith that God's going to heal something? No, I want God. I want God to show up. I want that's God. Amen. He is. He doesn't heal. He's the healer. Yep. He is healing. Yeah. He, he doesn't just prosper. He is prosperity. You know, it's like it, it, in the in the in the garden. At, they name Eve is uh, in the in the Hebrew. It's uh, living, and that what that means is because we say, well, he named her Eve because she's uh, the mother of life or the giver of life. But the real word is living, and what it means is. All life comes from her. So with Jesus, he's Yeshua, which is Joshua, which means Savior. Why do they call him Savior? Because he saves. Everything he touches, he saves. Does that make sense? And so what I'm saying is everything we do, even though it's spiritual and it's a good thing and it's this and it's that and it's the other, we're doing it because of God. 
because of the God that's in us wants to be out of us. He wants to be revealed. He wants to be released. Everything we're doing, we're doing about seeing God, manifesting God, experiencing God for us and for others, that he becomes real, that they see him and, and experience him. Religion says to follow God because his gifts are great and his threats are terrible. Hallelujah. A lot of people come to God because they're wanting blessed and they want to escape hell. The threats of horrible, scary things and the benefits are pretty good, right? So that's, that's what happens, but that doesn't glorify God. Look at Matthew again. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4, verses 3 through 10. where Jesus is having this interaction with the devil. He's just, uh, God has just declared over him, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You know, the, the dove came down, the spirit, uh, symbolic of the spirit. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up unto the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. It's written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again the devil took him up on an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I'll give you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only. Amen shall you serve. Praise the Lord. Now, see, a defective God can offer you great gifts and terrible fears. He's the God of this world, little Jesus, a defective God. But you can see he has the ability. What those things he offered, he could do. He still had authority. Jesus hadn't gone to the cross. Jesus hadn't been uh, crucified and raised from the dead. He was still the, you see what I'm saying? So our motives a lot of times are, are, are skewed because that doesn't glorify God just because you can do something, amen? And, and, and you, can, you can be offered great gifts. You can get great things and, and, and uh, be fearful of terrible threats, but, that, but, but that's, a, that's not God. That is why we come to God. Right. Psalms 111, verses 2 through 4. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and His righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of com and compassion. His works are great because he is great. Praise the Lord. How great thou art. Amen. Amen. But even without the works, he's great. Because he's God, because he's love. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 3, verses 20 through 26. Romans 3, 20 through 26. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier 
of the one who has faith in Jesus. Praise the Lord. See, the struggle isn't to carry our stuff. Praise God. The real struggle is to let our stuff be carried. Hallelujah. It's the struggle to trust God with life's stuff. Hallelujah. God's love. I know why I was confused. It's a New King James Version. I was looking at it. Praise the Lord. Which is fine. So we're, we, we struggle with life, with relationships, with stuff. When he says to enter into his rest, What does he say? Labor to enter in to my rest. We're struggling with the, with the stuff. And he's saying, if you've got to struggle, struggle to give me the stuff. Make the struggle about trusting me, not about you getting it done, not about you accomplishing it, not about you looking at your situation or your circumstance or your relationship or whatever it might be and struggle with that. Because when we look at it from that perspective, it looks like there's no answer. It looks like there's, I, I've done everything I can do. I've said everything I can say. I've given everything I can give. But when you look to the Lord, the opportunities are unlimited. The possibilities are without end. God can do all things. Amen? And he can do it through us when we trust him when we let him do the struggling. Amen? Amen? Okay, back to Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree may, be, may not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills to the chief musician with my spirit. So it's a fight for freedom that we're talking about. Freedom from worry. Amen. Freedom from anxiety and stress. Amen. It's a fight for peace, for hope, for joy. The Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. I will hope, I will yet hope in the Lord, the, the psalmist said. Praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Praise God. All that is threatened by unbelief, joy, hope, prosperity, Relationships made whole. Life. Love. It's all threatened. It's all threatened by unbelief. By doubting God's love. By questioning God's motives. By wondering, am I worthy? Have I done enough? Am I good enough? Praise God. God is love. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Therefore, Jesus is love. Look at John 15, verses 5 through 8. John 15, verses 5 through 8. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abideth in me, I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. But without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered. Men gather them up and cast them into the fire, and they're burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will, and it'll be given unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, 
that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So God is glorified not by our strength, but by our dependence, by our confidence in him, by our trust in him. As I said earlier, God is most glorified in me when I trust him, when I'm satisfied with him. He will satisfy the desires of your heart. And as I said here, I don't know if it was Sunday or when it was, but most of us don't even know our own heart. Amen? That's why we're looking for happiness when we're, what, what we're really after is love. What we're really after is fulfillment. After, what we're really after is completion, wholeness. And we're settling for something, you know, we're settling for the bubble gum on the end cap. Hallelujah. When, when our hunger is really for something sustainable, something that's really going to benefit us and bless us and, and satisfy us instead of give us a moment, a, a rush of sugar. Hallelujah. We're looking for something that's going to be satisfying, something that's ultimately not only satisfies us, but is good for us, that blesses us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it's God that works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. Hebrews, yes, Hebrews 13, verses 20 and 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well putting in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Can you see what God is showing us here? Amen. Hallelujah. When we make the focus on God, God's already got a plan. He's already here. He's already in us. He's already wanting to do all of these things. All we have to do is trust. Amen. You've got a mission. You've got a ministry. You've got the ability to reveal God. If you make it about God, if you make God the focus, I'm not talking about religiously. I'm just talking about stay aware because he has put you where you are so that he can get out. So that he can influence the people you in, that, that you have interaction with. Amen. So that he can become real to them so that he can bless them. Hallelujah. It's God. You're, you're the ride. Amen. You're the limo that pulls up to the door and says, hey, your blessing has arrived. Praise the Lord. I'm your vehicle, baby. Yeah. I can take you anywhere you want to go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know, I can't help myself. Praise the Lord. I do that every time. But that's the truth. We are his ride. We are the means by which he gets from A to B and to C and to D and all the other places. Hallelujah. And all... The only thing that really we lack most of the time is awareness. Praise God. Okay, back to Habakkuk one more time. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. One more scripture and we'll wrap up here. Yeah, 3, 17 through 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's what I'm saying. This is where we're at, okay? I'm looking out here at two, four, six, eight, ten people. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Amen. You know what? You got it. Praise the Lord. That's what we're talking about here. In the natural, we're looking and saying, well, I don't know what everybody's so excited about. I'll tell you what I'm excited about. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon high places. The chief singer, you know, so I'm, I'm saying God's going to, God is going to take us to some places that we couldn't even, we, we couldn't even imagine going there. 
But he's going to give us the ability to go into some spiritual things, some higher up places, some mountains, amen, because we're willing to rejoice in the Lord even when it doesn't look like anything's happening. That's called trusting God. That's called loving God. In the face of the lie of the devil, amen, we're going to rejoice in the Lord. And he is my strength. He is my victory. He will bring about what he has declared, amen, and he'll make it in a way that it will supersede anything I could have done. In fact, he has to give me deer feet, hallelujah, to go where he wants to take me. And that goes for you as well. So the enemy is all about getting you to look at the barren field, to get you to look at the broken relationship, to get you to look at the dysfunctional this or that or the other. God is all about telling us, if you'll trust me, I've got a place I want to take you to that you haven't even dreamed about. In fact, you can't get there without me. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Crops will fail. People won't produce. People will miss it. They'll let you down. Circumstances will look bad. But the Lord has a plan. And if I can stare down the devil with all of his lies, God has prepared a place for us that will supersede any dream. He wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that we have ever asked or thought. Every supernatural move of God, every miracle, every soul saved, every breakthrough, every area of our lives that we have prayed about individually and collectively, God wants to do beyond that. He wants to take us to places that we haven't even thought about, places that we cannot go in our own ability. Hallelujah. We'll wrap it up with this. Psalms chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. Last scripture. Psalms 40, 1 through 5. I believe this, and I believe 2017 is the get on your climbing boots, praise the Lord. Get on some, uh, you know, get a little rosin on your hands and get ready to hang on to the rope and start <laughs> moving up, praise God. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings, and he hath put a new song in my heart, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust the Lord. When God takes us up there, people are going to see it. God, people are going to see that God is moving. They're going to start seeing fruit on the vine. They're going to start seeing stuff in the field, hallelujah, because God has taken us somewhere. They can't miss it. They're going to see it too. It's going to cause people to turn to God and trust God. Amen. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. And respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord is our strength. Love is our strength. Your faith. Praise the Lord. Without it, it's impossible to please God. Faith worketh by love. That's why it's impossible to please God without faith, because love is exposed and expressed in faith. And that pleases God. Hallelujah. That gets his attention. And you know what else it does? It casts out fear. When the vines are not producing and there's no crop in the field, still rejoice because of confidence in God knowing that he's going to take us someplace someplace spectacular a place that only he's been but he's willing to share it with us if we'll put our confidence in him and trust him can you say praise the Lord amen, amen. so it's not just about loving somebody for the sake of being lovely it's love them so that God can be revealed because he's got some place he's trying to take us to. And love, friend, is the road map. Hallelujah. It's not only the map, but it's the means that will put us in the midst of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. God bless you all.
appreciate you being here tonight. Amen. Go in the power of his might. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.